I believe that every movie adheres to the 29-point story structure. No matter if the writer outlines first or dives in blind, the end product follows the same 29 beats. Collateral is my 32nd piece of evidence. This film stands out as a template for creating an engaging and believable character arc for an everyman protagonist. Max's inner conflict perfectly aligns with his impossible mission, creating a man whom the opening scene Max would never thought he could become. It stands as a testament to Jamie Foxx that he can carry the incredible emotional weight of this movie. Michael Mann coordinates the camera and the cinematography to create one of the most gorgeous depictions of LA. Every angle, every frame, every image relates back to Max, the protagonist, and his evolving state of mind. And the whole package is tied together by weaponizing the 29-point story structure. Let's begin. A tight focus on the core elements of the protagonist's personality, inner conflict, and situation. We follow Max through the first few hours of his cabbie shift and the wide range of affairs he's forced to deal with, while also giving a teaser of Max's antagonist, who receives his mission from the transporter. Where, why, and how the protagonist exists in their world, with a focus on why they don't quite fit in. Annie provides the chance for Max to supply his exposition and aspirations, and we witness a comfortable cabbie, one with an easy rapport and friendly banter. Then Vincent passes Annie to enter the story. A singular event that's never happened before and is destined to lead the characters away from their status quo. Paradoxically, the cabbie hails the fair and Max joins his fate with Vincent. An examination of what's different in light of the something new was the same in spite of it in relation to the status quo. Max's demeanor shifts defensively in the new fair's presence and Vincent lures the dutiful cabbie away from his dutiful existence. The discovery that things are less than ideal, or an exploration of how badly things are. A dead body falls on Max's taxi, which he quickly deduces that Vincent is responsible, and the police have already picked up the scent. Characters dedicate their effort to a specified goal, which is smaller in scope than the primary objective of the third act. Vincent restates the agenda of the evening, with a focus on Max's timid obedience. Then Max scrambles to save the lives of two cops and nearly fails. A brief checklist of the story elements needed for the second act. Vincent's control over the situation, his extreme adaptability, the names on the hit list, and Max's desperation to escape. The singular event that launches the characters into the wild jungle of the second act, also called an oh shit moment. Vincent cleans up Max's mess, frustrating the hitman. Oh shit. Characters must learn all new rules and expectations distinct to this adventure. Max deals with the loss of life he caused, while Detective Fanning sniffs out the missing pieces of Vincent's first crime scene and Max is taken off guard by the hitman's sudden change in demeanor. Characters showcase their ability to grow in the areas this adventure requires, typically through external means. Vincent takes the moment to get to know his target, while Max bears witness to the criminal undertakings of the doomed man before them. Characters face legitimate and understandable reasons to deviate from their stated convictions, agendas, or desires. Max melts down tries and fails to walk away from death, from Vincent. Then he's backed into a corner and must lead Vincent the hitman to his mother's hospital bed. An escalation of problems that vex the characters. Detective Fanning crosses paths with the hitman he started sniffing around, while Ida reveals a wealth of information about Max to Vincent. Then Max hijacks the hitless briefcase and scatters the contents onto the freeway. Characters evolve internally by utilizing everything they've gathered and learned. Detective Fanning links his missing corpse to Vincent's second target, and sniffs out the bigger conspiracy. Max connects with Vincent as only an experienced cabbie can. Journey-weary characters reconcile the reality of their ongoing situation with who they were in the first act. Max finally resolves the first act reluctance and tells Vincent about his dreams and aspirations. Then he's forced to cosplay as the hitman to retrieve the hit list. 
Detective Fanning resolves his first act of reluctance and cooperates with the feds for leads. A singular event that strikes at the protagonist core conflict. Detective Fanning identifies Max's cab, and hope begins to shine that he'll make it out of this alive. Characters find needed answers for both external and internal conflicts. Max gets a taste of Vincent's world and sees what kind of a man survives, while a third body confirms the presence of a hitman targeting witnesses to a federal case. The clarified objective is realized in part or in whole, though it's meaningless without the completion of the primary objective. Max channels Vincent just in time to save his own life, but that means the hitman gets his next two names. Detective Fanning pulls in resources in real time, but he's only playing catch up. An existential conflict that wounds the character's sense of self, worldly identity, or their journey. Detective Fanning connects the dots to Max's innocence, but no one will listen. The feds prepare their assault strike against the killer cabbie, and Vincent accidentally sparks a glimmer of hope that Max might survive this after all. An undeniable win for the protagonist, typically in direct connection to the rebirth. The feds arrive within moments of Max and Vincent, and Detective Fanning acts on his own hunch that the cabbie is innocent. A grand loss directly connected to the character's newfound inability to quit the journey. Everyone who engages Max gets shot, and not all of it is a coincidence. A thematic freefall tied directly to the heavy price. The target's henchmen swarm Vincent. Detective Fanning separates Max from the hitman, then Tom Cruise proves his comfortability with fight choreography and action sequences. A singular event that robs the protagonist of seemingly any chance of success. Vincent shoots Detective Fanning, the only person who believed in Max. Characters cannot return to their starting personas and must turn to face the primary objective. Vincent waxes poetic about the grand triviality of his actions in the ever-expanding universe, and Max calls out Vincent's lack of humanity as the reason he feels disconnected from it all, then stares down his own inconsequential life and lack of action, thus crashing the cab. Characters move towards the climax while utilizing the major swings and sneaky misdirections of the story. The dead bodies in the trunk looks really, really bad for Max, who is placed in a position to see that Annie is Vincent's final target, then channels the hitman yet again to escape arrest and save the girl. The final confrontation between the protagonist and the antagonistic force. Max gives conflicting advice and ends up keeping Annie in danger. He scrambles to get into the building, then Vincent finds his target. The singular event where the protagonist finally confronts their place in the status quo. Max shoots the bad guy and saves the girl. The direct aftermath of the climax. Shot, bleeding, and angry, Vincent chases his target, though I'm sure at this point he'd shoot Max for personal reasons. Max and Annie fail at outwitting the hitman during their escape and get pinned down in a subway train. The consequences of the climax in relation to other characters and the status quo. Max and Vincent face off and unload their magazines in each other's general direction. Fatally wounded, the hitman finally puts down his gun and dies anonymously on the subway. A tight focus on the protagonist contrasted from the opening. Max survives the night and keeps Annie alive to fight the good fight. And there you have it, my 32nd example to support my argument that all movies follow the exact same story structure, regardless of how the writer approaches their crafts. Collateral took us step by step through Max's overnight evolution and capitalized on the emotional characteristics of each sequence within the 29 point story structure. But does this character drama follow the same plot beats? as the eighth installment of a sci-fi franchise that spans planets as well as generations? Yes, yes it arguably does. Next on my docket, Star Wars The Last Jedi. Please subscribe to stay up to date with this and future videos, and please like and comment with your thoughts and reactions. I'll talk to you next time.